is a presentation of MSG Varsity, only on Optimum. Optimum, let's connect more. On this night on MSG Varsity, the GWB points towards the Garden State of New Jersey. And for two New Jersey public school football towns, it all comes down to this. The state finals are right here. Westfield taking on Bridgewater Raritan for the right to call yourself a champion of the Garden State. It's a look at MetLife Stadium. For this North 2 Group 5 final, number 17, the Blue Devils of Westfield High School and RMSC Varsity Tri-State Top 25, taking on number 9, the Panthers of Bridgewater Raritan. Well, good to see everybody. Jimmy Cavallo, our entire MSG Varsity gang. And welcome to the famous final scene for New Jersey football. North 2, Group 5. Westfield, those Blue Devils, haven't won this title since 1977 when there was 33,000 in the old Giant Stadium, uh, of course. Butch Wolfhawk and the gang. And then Bridgewater, Raritan, the Panthers. If you're talking just about Bridgewater, Raritan High School, they have never won this title, Mike Quick. And Mike, what we love about this matchup, these two teams started a journey three months ago. They have combined to play 22 games. They have combined for 22 wins. They are both undefeated. You know what's pretty cool, partner? There are 12 teams in the state of New Jersey that can finish the season unbeaten. There are 13 unbeatens that come into this weekend. The only game where two unbeatens get after it is this one. Somebody is going to lose. Two communities are full of a buzz at the prospect of winning a state championship. Of course, for Westfield, their skipper is Jim DeSarno. In his 10th year, he came out of Pompton Lakes High School as a hard-charging football player, and for the last 10 years, he's been running the show, and boy, have they handled all the competition. And then, of course, on the other side, for the BR Panthers of Bridgewater Raritan. And Scotty Bray went to Bridgewater Raritan. And back in the day, though, it was BR West. He's in his ninth year as I'm coming into this game after an epic overtime win against Ridge in the semis. They're looking for their first ever title as Bridgewater Raritan. So the captains meet here at midfield. And look at that spectacular NFL logo. Mike, it's all part of the thrill uh, for these guys playing you know, on the same field, in the same stadium with the New York football giants and, of course, the gangrene New York Jets. You were asking everybody all week, what are you fan, Jets or Giants? Because you knew we were coming to MetLife. And I tell you what, Jim, we met with a lot of schools this week, and I love the answer for most of the kids and coaches we talked to. They were a fan of the school they play for and the team they coach. I thought it was pretty cool. But interesting thing, how neat is it? that on the weekend that they play here at MetLife, the Jets and Giants on Sunday will close the weekend playing each other. Pretty cool. It will be a rock and roll weekend here at the MetLife starting tonight on Thursday night. MSG Varsity will be with you all weekend long. We will be live again starting at 5 o'clock tomorrow right through the 8 p.m. Battle Royale between Don Bosco and St. Joe's and then Super Saturday on MSG Varsity. You just go out there, you get the bag of bagels, you get the cold cuts for lunch, you order dinner in because we're coming to you live from 10 a.m. right through Saturday. Saturday night, it is going to be a spectacular weekend right here at MSGVarsity.com. And you see now, the nation for the Blue Devils of Westfield High School. Been a long time since they won the title. 1977, they come in at a perfect 11-0. Their last win against Plainfield in the 111th meeting on Thanksgiving Day. And then on the other side, Bridgewater Round. And Scotty Bray, he went to BR West. He never won a title as their quarterback, 
But in 1989, BR East won the state championship. And then came the split. They combined the high school, the split or the coming together, yeah. I should say. They combined the high schools. East met West to form Bridgewater, Raritan and High School. The Panthers have never won this title. Two teams unblemished the entire regular season. The journey is to make it to MetLife on the first weekend of December where you can call yourself a New Jersey state champion. Davidovis, Justin, the junior, has teed it up for Bridgewater Raritan. And for these two schools, the journey to get here is complete. The group five title is on the line. We are underway in the New Jersey state final. Kickoff driven back into the end zone. Can't bring it out in high school football. So the Blue Devils of Westfield will take over first and ten from their 20-yard line. Well, first thing we see right away, this is why one of this, ki this kicker, Justin David Davidovitz, is one of the best kickers not only in the tri-state area, but one of the best kickers in America. He's just a junior. He has a huge foot. The type of guy, and colleges don't like to offer money to kickers. This is the type of guy a year from now, Jim, is going to get a scholarship offer to play college football. David Dovis, powerfully built at 170 pounds, 5 foot 9. So here we go. First down for Westfield. Zach Kelly will hand it off on the interior. And grinding for yards is the franchise. Jack Curry to captain number 27. You want to talk about impact players in this game. And you see the boys, Curry and Kessler, for the Westfield Blue Devils. On the other side, Eric Nickel and Cole Harper. Yeah, Curry's now just four yards away for breaking Butch Wolfhawk's single-season rushing record. Comes into the game with over 1,600 yards, and there's the big, tall drink of water, Harper. Second down to the left side, grinding for yards up to about the 28. He'll be two yards shy. So it'll bring up third down now as Jack Curry inches close towards the single season rushing record of Butch Wolfhorn. What a ride number 27 has given the Blue Devil fans this year, carrying the load. And Jim, with that run, he now needed eight yards. He is tied at 1,637 yards with the great Butch Wolfhawk, former Michigan and Westfield star and New York Giant. Third down and short now for the Blue Devils. Out of shotgun, they go to Curry. Curry trying to get to the line. Curry is going to be short. Where is he? Ball comes down to the spot. If it gets to the line on the 30, he has it. Referee puts it down. He's going to have the first down. He got there. And he also has the single season rushing record. He stands alone now. Butch Wolfork. Good job by 75. Brett Spass, the junior tackle, 6'1", 255. Quick out to Johnny Shirk, and Shirk catches it and goes up to the 40. Shirk, junior. Leads the team in receptions. That's his 32nd, 33rd catch of the year, five touchdowns. They don't throw it a lot, but they're pretty efficient when they do throw the football. They want to run power football. When they played Immaculata this year in an incredibly strong windstorm, they just got in there behind Curry. He ran the ball 40 times in the football game. Second down and short. They'll go to Curry. Curry, not much there. Good job by that Bridgewater Raritan defense staying home. On the tackle that time was Matty Aleandroso. Now watch Ethan Rogers, too, number 45, coming off the edge, the National Merit Scholar. Watch 45 come flying in there. That's a good job by gang tackling for Bridgewater Raritan. Team's given up 168 points this year. So Alessandro, Trevor Smith, and Ethan Rogers now brings it to another third down and short. Stacked up at the line of scrimmage, short of the first down is Jack Curry. And there he is again, Trevor Smith, the thumper on the inside. How about this guy, right? Last year, blows out his ACL. He's playing in this game. Smith with an ACL gym that doesn't work. I mean, the thing doesn't work. And he's just out there still playing the game of football. The coaching staff, Coach Bray, going on and on about big number 54. They love him over there in Bridgewater. Westfield is forced to punt the football. 
and now fielding it at his 27. Looking for a crack is Johnny K. So Johnny K will come up to the 34 yard line. And of course, if it's Keaton out at MSG Varsity, Amanda Puglisi is along the ride. And Amanda, great to see you here at MetLife. And you know teams, when they come into big games like this, they try to stick with their traditions and superstitions. Of course, Jimmy. And if, when you have two teams like this coming into the game at 11-0, you have to wonder, what's their secret? When did they start thinking about MetLife? And for Westfield, it was very simple. During their summertime conditioning, they started ending their huddles, breaking their huddles, by chanting MetLife, MetLife. And that's something they continued throughout the season. Now Bridgewater Rowden has their own way of breaking the huddles. Their team is all about legacy, and that's how they end theirs. Coach Bray says it's not about the wins and losses, it's about the way you want to be remembered. Very nice. We had a good meeting with Scotty Bray, fun guy to talk to, and I love the fact that the confidence Westfield had to go with that MetLife huddle break. What a beautiful facility. Great coaches' offices, locker rooms, place gigantic. So now Eric Nickel, what a season he has had. The captain, big, strong right-hander, stands in there, floats one out there, flies, got his man, perfectly thrown football by Eric Nickel into the hands of Chris Trotta. Yeah, you look at that left side of the line, big number 79, Zach Misio, doing a good job, the left tackle. Look at all those guys, 56 in there, Chris Nice. He wasn't to that. He wasn't for Westfield on that. The left side of the line gave Nickel a whole bunch of, hey, the left side of the line was money for Nickel. How about that, Jim? You're on a roll, and it's just the first quarter. <laughs> so Eric Nickel, Mike, about 230 pounds, six foot three. He's like the high school version of Ben Roethlisberger. But give it on the inside, picking up about two yards on the play. Hey, Jim, you know this. In the semifinal two weeks ago, strange game. They're up against Ridge, 20 to nothing in that football game. Ridge comes back, ties it, and then in overtime, down 30 to 29, they go for two. Had they made the completion, Ridge would be here at 7 and 4 instead of an unbeaten Bridgewater Raritan team. High drama in the semifinals. Now we'll have a flag come in. You know, when you play the common opponent game, Jim. We have Jim, a line warning against Westfield. When you play the common opponent thing, major advantage goes to Westfield over Bridgewater Raritan in this game. But you throw that out now. They're playing each other. Doesn't matter what you did. You're here. So Nickel stands in. It was a sideline warning. No harm, no foul on that one. With Nickel now looks it. Swings it out to the outside. That's Ricky Tate, captain the captain. And Ricky Tate. Ricky Tate, what an upside this junior has. And they love how far Ricky Tate has become. What they tell us, Mike, he's learned how to put the work in. Yeah, didn't know if he was serious a year ago. Didn't know if he loved the game. Didn't know if he wanted to put the work in for the game. Came back, and the all coaches all talked about it in the offseason. And when he came back, he was a different cat. They loved being around him. Nickel will give to Johnny K on first down. Not much there at the point of attack. So Johnny K, the senior. Boy, he looks like a linebacker, doesn't he, Jim? I mean, that does not look like a quarterback right there. 231 pounds. He's going to play college football. Question is where? Kutztown's interested. Southern Connecticut, Lehigh, and Lafayette sniffing around a little bit right now. We'll see. So Eric Nichols stands in. Second down and call at nine. Two receivers to his right. He swings it out. Intended that time for Ricky Tate. Another flag comes in here. So we'll sort out the flag. Nickel has come out throwing in this game, but he is also the leading rusher for Bridgewater Raritan. We have illegal formation against Black. It is declined. Third down. Interesting decline of the penalty there by Westfield. So it'll bring up third down now because the pass was incomplete. So Nichols stands in. The ball at the 25-yard line. Here is Eric. Two receivers split wide to the right. Little play action fake. Nickel takes a look. 
fires one inside. Ricky T goes up and hauls it in. It's a first down for the Panthers of Bridgewater Raritan. It'll be first and goal as Nichols steps into this one to Tate. Uh, gets a good job there by number 45. That's Ethan Rogers, his fullback, helping him out. Personal protector. That's allowing him to step up. That's a great job by 45. And Tate catching the ball away from his body, doing a good job pulling it in. I can see why the coaches are into this guy, Tate. 6'1 junior, Tate. Gotten better and better. What an offseason. Worked his butt off in the weight room. Led the charge. Now on first and goal, they'll give to John Kay, but not much there in the interior of that Westfield defense. No surprise, Jim, who's in on that? Owen Kessler, right? Number 64, he's their guy. What do they say? He's unblockable, right? Kessler, just a junior, probably going to go to Harvard. That's what everybody in his family has done in their lifetime, and he, he, is, a, he is a whale of a football player. 6'4", 215 pounds. We'll call that number a lot tonight, partner. No doubt about it. Kessler is a beast. Second down and goal now for Nickel. Johnny K now to the right side. Wrapped up at the line of scrimmage. Nothing doing again. The defense rises to the occasion. That time, it was Owen Kessler again. Kessler, here's a guy. 55 tackles, 11 tackles for loss, double-digit sacks, and when he gets on you, you ain't going anywhere. All right? Hey, listen, somebody probably just said Yale when they were running the football. That's why he jumped all over him. He doesn't like Yale. What, what do you think? Probably Harvard, right? Harvard family, but Kessler in his junior year, he's been unblockable. Third down and goal now for Nickel. Passing situation. Nickel takes a look. Plenty of time to survey. Goes the inside route. Ball was complete for a second. Now it's loose. They're going to call it a fumble, and it's a turnover. Ricky Tate had the ball, and it's a turnover. Westfield has the football. Well, remember, there's no replay. Nicky Mayer gets the, intercept, uh, gets the fumble recovery. Did he have it? Yeah, it's a good call by the officials. He definitely had it. Who comes over there and makes the tackle? Number 42, Michael O'Connor. O'Connor's been a big-time player all year for these, this Westfield football team. Of course, had the two interceptions earlier this year against Immaculata in Week 5 when both teams were undefeated. That's a good call by the officials. Tate controlled the football. It got punched out by O'Connor. Now they come out of the shadow of their own end zone. So backed up deep. Also in on that was Jacob Kerbstadt. Kerstat, number one, who broke his hand a few weeks ago. Hey, Kroltzman, against the defense. And Westfield will take that. So the, they'll get some breathing room now. The ball will come out to about their seven-yard line. So Jim DeSarno looks out. And his defense forces a turnover deep in the red zone in a drive that looked like Bridgewater Raritan was heading into the end zone. And now Scotty Bray will look to his defense to return the favor. First down and five for Zach Kelly. To the left side. Bouncing it out is Curry. Jack Curry crosses over the 20 yard line. And the all time leading rusher for a single season in career. That's what 27 does. Jim, watch Jack Kirk here. Shirk, number five. He's out on the outside. Look at this. That's a good job of stalk blocking. Allows Curry to pick up another 11 yards. When your receivers are willing to make blocks downfield, that's why you have guys that become all-time leading rushers. It's one thing to get through the first level, second level. Guys like Shirk getting it done. Curry. Yes, yeah, Shirk, Mike. Has had a very steady year at wide receiver and battled an ankle sprain, but he'll tough it out now for this championship game. All hands on deck. So now second down after Curry picked up about six. So call it second and four. Zach Kelly takes a look. Kelly now fires one. Oh it's into the hands of Shirk. Very close to a first down. So here's Kelly, just rips it out there. 
Good job keeps it low. You don't want to keep that thing high to the inside. That's a good job keeping it downstairs where only Shirk could get the football. That's a good throw. Possession throw moves the chains. So again, when you look at this drive right now, the biggest play of the drive so far, the five-yard encroachment. Kelly now swings it out to Curry. Curry looking for some daylight. He'll find it. He'll pick up about nine on the play. Well-designed play that time by Westfield. Big, chunky yardage. Call it a nine-yard gain by Jack Curry. And it'll bring up second down and one. Well, when they take a look at this play, watch 75, the right tackle. Brett Spass, there he goes. He locks off the outside. He locks off the big guy, Cole Harper, 6'4", 205, who's had a great year. But that's the second time we've seen Spass today do something good. The 6'1", 255-pound junior playing real well so far at right tackle. Second down and one. Off the fake. Here's Kelly. Got the first down. Kelly doesn't run it a lot, Jim. That's only the 35th time he's carried the football. Just enough to keep him off balance. Runs for about four yards per carry, but just enough to keep him off balance. Mike, you like the look of Spass. The coach told us he's our most improved lineman. Very coachable kid. And the junior has really stepped in to do the job. First down now. They swing it out to the flats. This one is incomplete. Zach Kelly intended for Shirk. So it'll bring up... Second down and ten. That was Jelani Pierre. Uh, he was unbelievable in the semi semifinal victory against Union, 44-14. Pierre had a couple of touchdowns that day. Kelly threw three. Two of them went to Pierre, one from about 60 yards away. So these two have been a pretty nice combination this year. But when you think of this team as a defense, you got to say we got to stop 27 first. But nobody's been able to do it. Pierre and J.D. Martin are split wide right. The, the fake is on the inside. Zach Kelly had a little daylight before he's brought down to the turf. Cole Harper and the defense. So now it'll bring up third down and five. A little ride in the side here. Uh, good job by Kelly. Really good job. Cole Harper, steady as she goes. Number 86. So now third down and five for Zach Kelly. What a playoff run for the senior QB. Kelly now, a little comeback route into the hands of Jack Shirk. He'll have a first down, and the drive is alive for the Blue Devils of Westfield. Another well-designed throw from Kelly to Shirk. And a well-designed scheme that Westfield's running right now. They've got you thinking, little jet screen right here, perfectly thrown because it allows them to catch the football coming up the field, breaks the tackle, gets the first down. Really? Hey, listen, this drive is working because of the guys up front. They're doing a wonderful job for this Westfield football team. First and 10 from the 34 now. Kelly hands it off to Curry. Curry tries to bounce outside. Good pursuit to the defense. Hat on hat. Ricky Tate was the first man there on the contact. Curry will pick up a couple on the play. Jim, it's amazing to think that Curry came into high school as a chubby kid. And he just worked himself into looking like Rocky Balboa. And now the kid who comes in with a little baby fat on him, how about this, 5'9", can get up with a tennis ball and dunk a tennis ball on a legit rim. He gets rim, and here is Curry now on second down. He'll push forward, pick up about three on the play. So now bring up another third down on the tackle that time was Justin Bryant, the sophomore, number 28 for the defense. You know how they talk about receivers, these yak receivers, yards after catch? I'd like to see that he's a yah, yards after hit, because he gets hit and he keeps going. Nobody's bringing this guy down with a first hit. Third down now. It's Curry again. Curry hit immediately at the line of scrimmage. He'll lose yardage right there. Ethan Rogers. And that is Mr. Rogers' neighborhood. Maybe I shouldn't have said what I just said. Nobody's going to bring him down. And then Rogers, that National Honor Society member, he's just going to flex right in there, does a good job coming off the edge, and just hangs on. Senior, 5'10", 195 pounds. And give him credit, because Curry's that guy who's going to bounce off people. And what a quick first quarter this has been. The National Merit Scholar, Ethan Rogers.
wonderful senior season, the epitome of a student athlete. Twelve minutes are in the books on a night in New Jersey at MetLife where the champs, the Blue Devils, and the other champs, the Panthers of Bridgewater. Two champs came, only one will leave as the champ. The second quarter is next, right here on MSG Varsity. Is it overcoming the odds or poise under pressure? Is it sheer athletic ability or the ability to electrify a crowd? Or maybe it's all of the above. Join MSG Varsity and hosts Mike Quick and Jimmy Cavallo as they announce the 2015 All-Metro football team on December 17th at 7 p.m. Only on Optimum. East Rutherford, New Jersey on MSG Varsity, where tonight the North 2 Group 5 title is on the line. The two seed versus the one seed, but they're 17 and 9 in our poll. No score between Westfield and Bridgewater Raritan. Fourth down now, and Westfield is going for it. Here's a quick strike. Jelani Pierre, and Jelani Pierre has a first down. On the quick slant, the senior found some room and Zach Kelly delivered a strike. Well again, look at he has that big horseshoe to throw in and Pierre, second leading receiver on this football team, finds a soft spot in the zone, just settles into it, puts that ball away and gets them going really good right now. Good job by Kelly with that protection stepping up and ripping it. So now first down, Zach Kelly, another quick out, down to the 10 yard line, maybe to the 9. Looks like J.D. Marner, so Marner the senior, and Zach Kelly is mixing it up, spreading it around. Picked up about three on the play, and you can see why they've been so impressed with Zach Kelly in this great playoff run. The kid Kelly, who grew up playing quarterback, he split time this year with Phil Martini, the junior, but since the playoffs came, they've gone to Kelly. Now it's Curry right side. Jack Curry puts on the brakes. He got down to about the eight. Good speed to the football. Nicky Adanasio and Ricky Tate. Johnny K in there, too, coming up from his corner spot. The senior, 5'9", 157 pounds, and joined by the best writer in all the land, Mike Kinney, who's been covering Westfield and Bridgewater Raritan forever. You surprised this game's going as quickly as it is? Not at all, no. Uh, Jack, you know, with, with, West, with Westfield, Jack Curry's going to run the ball. They're going to possess. They're going to control the clock. Bridgewater, I thought they would throw maybe a little more. A little surprised by that, but no, not by the quickness of the game. Thought it'd be a quick tempo. Jack Curry now on third down will be short of the first down. So we'll go to another fourth down here for Westfield. Let's see the decision here. Big play by number 28, the sophomore inside linebacker, Justin Bryant. They really like what he's given this football team this year. Didn't know what to expect, but boy, have they gotten a lot out of him this year. Well, the decision has been made. And Westfield will look to take a lead with a field goal attempt. It'll be a 23-yarder. Remember the high school goal posts are five feet tighter than high school. It is good. What a great job kicking it through by Mike Moriarty. Irish Mike, they like to call him. And the Jolton Jr. has put the Blue Devils on the board. So Moriarty steps in there and gets the job done. Mike, you wrote a wonderful pregame article getting everybody set for this one. I thought one of the great things about the article is you broke down the schedules of both teams. And five common opponents, Westfield has handled their opponents much easier than Bridgewater Raritan. That's exactly right. Westfield played much better defense in those five games. Bridgewater, a lot of give and take with the Bridgewater game. Their offense was very good at times, but the defense did not stop people. Westfield stopped people and they possessed the clock with Curry. They played, you know, when you look at.
The fundamental football, Westfield in those five games was better than Bridgewater, yes. So the scoring drive is 16 plays, 87 yards. Moriarty with the 23-yard field goal. It ran nearly seven minutes. And Moriarty gives him a 3-0 lead. Off the kickoff now. Good job on the coverage team. Tracking that one right down. Jake Gaten, the sophomore, putting all that 5-6 frame on display, coming down the gunner. Makes a great shoestring tackle, got him on the waist, slid down, and takes down Johnny Kay. And Kay, a three-year starter, a wonderful football player. So that's a great job and so cool to see a sophomore. And that's what's great about high school football. 5-6, not a giant, but coming down, making a play. He'll remember that for the rest of his life. First and ten now for BR. The Panthers trail by three. Good leg drive here. Pushing the pile a couple yards is Kay. So Johnny Kay, the senior, will pick up about four on the play. Call it second down and six now. Nickel inside, give to Kay. Kay gets to the second level. He'll have the first down. Crosses over the 30-yard line to about the 31. Johnny Kay running hard. High snap controlled by Nickel. Good job navigating his way through there. Greg Johnson, number 66, the senior. What a good block to seal it off for Kay to hit the hole. Now first and ten for Eric Nickel. The captain looks over the field. Plenty of time. Takes a shot down the right side. Nearly intercepted. Ball hung up there. And Sid Douglas had a beat on it. So Sid Douglas, the senior, using his speed to come over and make a play on that one. Sid the kid. Well, it does come over. Big throw going up. And, Mike, when you think about Scotty Bray, you know, in week two, they beat Phillipsburg, had lost to the State Liners 12 consecutive times. And for that win, his face on December 13th for the Jets game is going to be up there. He was the Jets coach of the week. We talked about that in our meeting this week. That kind of set the tone, that win in week two for this season. You know, you got those demons behind you, and you can move forward. That was very big. That win and the win against Hunter and Central, two teams that just haunted Bridgewater forever. They got that done, and that was the key to the season. I didn't expect them to come into this game. I didn't expect them to be in this game, maybe. And I think those two games that start the season is what got them here. So Nickel looks over on third down and long. Nine yards to get the first down. And now they'll take a timeout. Will Scotty Bray Bridgewater Rowden with their first ever trip, Mike Kenny, to the state final as Bridgewater Rowden. I know the old timers will tell you about in the 70s with Bridgewater East winning 34 games in a row. And in the first year of the state final format, 1974, BR East wins the state championship, backed it up with 1 in 89. But BR East had a wonderful tradition. They did. Rio East had a wonderful tradition in a lot of sports. Uh, lacrosse, too. Football, lacrosse, baseball. Bridgewater West had them in basketball, that's for sure. But Bridgewater East had some tremendous athletes. I, I, I enjoyed a lot of Bridgewater East, especially lacrosse games back in those days, yeah. 34 in a row in the early 70s for BR East. That is a stout win streak. Now third down and nine. Eric Nickel looks over again. Nickel. Time to look over the field. Nickel to the right side, intended for Nick Adanasio. Just sails on him, and it's a punt situation for the Panthers of Bridgewater Raritan. Yeah, Eric, that time just put a little too much muster. That was more of a fastball, need to go to a change. He had the guy at the second level. Just want to take, and listen, 
they're all jacked up. They're playing here at MetLife. It's a different element. But when he settles in a little bit, he'll make that throw. He has improved so much from a year ago. A year ago, early in the season, struggled a bit, and then came of age, split time a year ago. But this year has done just terrific things. He is the reason. And listen, football is the ultimate team game. But Mike Kinney, he's a huge reason why they're undefeated and playing here at Thursday night in East Rutherford. You know, I got to see Bridgewater three times during the season, and what impressed me so much about Eric was that he's such a good running quarterback, but he got his feet set anytime he threw. His feet weren't set here. Like you said, he's got those happy feet right now. He's very nervous. Settles in, we'll see what happens, because what I was always impressed was that he got his feet set, got that front foot forward, made good, you know, made the right passes. Good job a moment ago by Davidovitz. Justin, the punter, kicker, got that one off because Westfield was coming. So now Zach Kelly and the offense take over. Ball's at the 28-yard line, first and 10 for the Blue Devils. Out they go to Jack Curry. Curry looks to turn the corner. He'll tiptoe down the sidelines as he turns it up. Pick up good positive yardage. Out of bounds at about the 35-yard line. So it'll bring up a very manageable now. Second down and call it three. Watch number 30, Tommy Fusilla, the junior. Just does enough and allows Curry to just get to the edge. Didn't have a lot of room with. But Fusillo, good block. Doesn't matter how hard you hit him. You just have to move him. Second down. Here's Curry. Curry falls forward very close to a first down. Might have got it. So we'll wait for the spot. Tommy Morley, number 77, the left guard. 6'1", uh, 6 feet, 240, the senior. Looks real good, three-year starter. And that, his block allowed Curry. There's nothing fancy about Curry. You know, this guy, that big old left guard, always the ball boy, the camps doing his thing here for Westfield. I love the line play of Westfield. First down, now they got it. Quick out. And look at this. Into daylight is Jelani Pierre. The defender went for broke and came up snake eyes, and Jelani Pierre holds it in. It's a huge gainer for the Blue Devils. Watch Johnny Kay. He's going to take a shot here. Just misses it with his left hand. His miss allows Pierre to catch it. Good job by Pierre. Seeing it in because that's not an easy catch with Kay coming up from his corner spot. Sees it in, then goes to work. So again now, Westfield in business. First down and 10. Jack Curry picks up a couple. Big hit at the tail end of that play. It was Kay. Came up from his safety spot. He laid a lick that time on Jack Curry. And Nicky Mitchell flying in there too. So about two yards on that play, Nick Mitchell, just a junior. Jim, when I watch Curry run, one of the things that surprises me, he's over 260 carries this year. At times he carries that football a little loose, he puts it out there. The astonishing number is he has no fumbles this year. So what does it tell you? That dude's got strong hands. That's what it tells you. Wide receiver screen. But Mike Kinney, Westfield, I mean, they have played from in front this year. They have really been efficient all along the way in those 11 wins. Yeah, very efficient. Uh, you know, they, they, they've, got, they've got the framework to be able to get the lead early and keep the lead. Curry's the guy there. Mike, you talked about his hands, his hands and his hips. You know, he's such a good runner, such an efficient runner, because he can do that. He can come out of the backfield, make that catch, but also pick up yards with his feet. with the center here, uh, the right guard, excuse me, Timmy Norris. I like what he's doing on that play. That's what sprung Curry. So now rolling out is Zach Kelly. Zach Kelly taking the shot. And we're going to have a personal foul, late hit or unnecessary roughness on the quarterback here as Kelly gets peeled up off the turf here at MetLife Stadium. And it is a personal foul. It's going to go against BR, and this is going to hurt. This will move the ball down to the 10 yard line. It's 
So Zach Kelly stands in there. And now Westfield is knocking on the door once again. Personal foul. Roping the passer. That's the defense. Half the distance. First down. He sounds upset. First down and 10 now for Kelly. Westfield looking to tack on to their 3 nothing lead. Zach Kelly hands off to Curry. Curry pushing forward. He'll go inside the 10 to about the 8. Kelly following Chris Verano. Chris Verano playing alongside his brother Matty Verano. This is first year on the field, number 32. Nice job here. Well, the big story now is Curry gets up and goes back to the ground. So the trainers are out. And this would be just a... If he can't go, this would be a huge swing in momentum because, Mike, he, you watched it that day at Immaculata. He carried the ball 40 times, a career high, and he was on pace here today to maybe catch that 40 carries in a game. This obviously already Curry with 18 carries for 80 yards. So he was, thank you, Johnny Malone, he was well on his way to establishing. Oh, and that is not, that looks like a right ankle injury. Don't like that. Oh, boy. No, don't like that. Jack Curry cannot even put that right foot on the ground. And he gets a wonderful ovation from the Westfield fans here in attendance at MetLife because he has meant so much to these Blue Devils this year. You want to talk about a guy who has carried the load. Well, Jim, as he comes through the line, totally innocent play. Cole Harper just happened to roll up at the end of the play, rolled up on his ankle. Nothing malicious, clean play. It's part of the game of football. So now the whole Westfield approach becomes different. Now it falls a lot on the shoulders of Matt Verano. So now Kelly on second down. They swing it out to Verano. Verano turns it up inside. He'll get to the five. Another flag comes in. Well, that's going to be holding against Westfield. Matt Alessandro, number 32, the defensive tackle, was coming down the line of scrimmage to make a play, and he got grabbed. So they're going to catch the guys in white for the hook. But that's a wonderful job by Alessandro. Holding on the offense. So the penalty now will back it up, and that'll hurt Moriarty's chance for a second field goal of the night. Ball spotted outside the 20-yard line. Zach Kelly looking to throw. This one is incomplete. Nearly caught that time. Good job going down to get it was Jack Shirk. It's good throw by Kelly. Second level throw here. Had the under route. He checks out. It's a good throw. Perfectly placed throw. Hey, it happens. It's part of sport. You're not going to catch everyone. You're not going to make a good throw on everyone. Team game. Greatest in the world. Third down now. Wesley would like to get Moriarty a little closer. They got to get inside the five for a first down. Kelly now will be sacked. And that will knock him out of field goal range. Cole Harper. Yeah, Cole Harper has had just an unbelievable year. That's his 13th sack of the season. And look at him. He just stays on board. And there's, once again, 32, Matty Alessandro, the junior defensive end. So 32 and 86, teaming up to put Westfield at a field goal. 
You make those two guys on bridge on the edge for Bridgewater, uh, uh, Cole and uh, Ethan Rogers. What a tremendous job they do! They're so quick and so athletic. They contain, but they get to you also. Crafty little kick that time by the punter Kyle Dombrowski. He'll roll it inside the 15 to about the 12-yard line, so he gets the job done there. But Cole Harper, Coach Scotty Bray, what do you say about Cole? Just a big old country boy, six foot four, 205 pounds, and sorry to the basketball coach, as Cole's an outstanding banger on the on the hoop team. His football season is running a little long, but they'll take it in Panther Country. Yeah, shame. You know, if he didn't take off his sophomore year, Jim, he'd probably have some one double A looks right now because of that frame. 6'4, 205. But when he took off his tent, didn't know if he loved the game of football. Missed it, came back, and boy, has he paid off huge this year for the Panthers in this 11 0 run to the championship. So Bridgewater Raritan sees Westfield get deep inside their red zone twice. Still only trail 3 0, and you see the images of Jack Curry and Amanda he's certainly given it a try down there we'll check in with you one second after this play now nickel back to throw nickel looking deep pocket collapses around him nickel gets back to the line of scrimmage picks up one but we know how much Jack Curry means to Westfield and he does not look well, Jimmy, Jack Curry, you guys see him on the sideline. He's jogging gingerly. You guys said it. It was his ankle. Now, his ankle is already taped, that right ankle, so they took off the shoe. They re-taped his ankle. Here he is again, still jogging on that sideline. Interestingly enough, while they were wrapping his ankle, everyone chants were coming from the stands. Of course, Jack Curry, he gives everybody a thumbs up. So, if he has anything to say, he'll be back. But right now, they're taking off his shoe once again, just to give him a little bit more support with that tape on that right ankle. Well, he certainly looks determined to come back in this game. Now, Nickel on the carry. Nothing there. Look at the penetration by Mikey O'Connor. O'Connor, the captain, the senior. So here's O'Connor. He's made some big plays this year for this bridge, uh, this Westfield team. Of course, the two interceptions against Immaculata that day. And what you see is it's so hard to run to the right because Owen Kessler is just number 64. He's taken up a lot of what Bridgewater wants to do. 64 is so active down there. You always have to have two on 64, opening up lanes for other guys like O'Connor to make plays. O'Connor. O'Connor is a three-year starter, great leader. Just an undersized guy running around there, number 42, for the Blue Devils of Westfield. O'Connor broke his hand before the Immaculata game. They put that club on him, Mike, to wrap it up, and he still had two picks in the game. Well, see, first of all, anytime you can put a club on a linebacker, that's a good thing. That looks real good. It's intimidating. And then to catch two passes via the interception that day shows you how talented a kid he is. Arguably the most valuable player on the Westfield team is Stevie Barmakian's dad. You know why? He's a hand surgeon. And they've had four broken hands on this team this year. And Dr. Barmakian <laughs> has been taking care of all these guys. Now that's a stat, partner. <laughs> Bridgewater has to punt. Dr. Joe Bermakian, one of the best around. Good job to climb the ladder. And getting that one off. The Vidovitz again. Justin, so skilled. That was a near disaster. Mike, you see a lot of games. Davidovitz, where do you put him as far as kickers go? I'll tell you what, uh, he is among the best in the state right now. There's no doubt about it. And I just, his consistency, his ability to put it in the end zone and kickoffs, his consistency and his length on field goals tell me that this kid could be one of the best we've ever seen. He's tremendous. Watch him at 5'9 here, Mike and Mike, after this play. Because Davidovitz, for all he means as a kicker, this is no place for a, a snap to sail over the top of your head. And at 5'9", he's got to go up and get this one. Well, that's a good job. Athletic. That's really good. So back comes Westfield. Swing the quick out to J.D. Marner. 
they continue to work on Jack Curry on the training table. Curry's got the mouthpiece in his mouth. He's slinging up the shoe. I mean, Jack Curry's coming back in this game. Yeah, but what you want to do is you don't want to bring him back. You want to get him into halftime, do some things, work on him. Let's get out of here. What you got to give Kelly credit because he's had a lot of drops today. He's never shown up one of his teammates for dropping a pass. Today. He's had four drop passes today. He's terrific that way. You know, and, and, and his patience and his understanding in those kinds of situations is one of the things that, makes, that has made Westfield such a good team. This may not be an awful thing either for this team to realize they can survive without Jack Curry with this lead. So the full star puts him in a third and five to third and ten. Well, coach will tell you, Jim DeSarno, about Zach Kelly. In a game a year ago, they're losing to Immaculata.